हरे कृष्णा इंडिया ऑन द मून चंद्रयान थ्री सक्सेस भगवद गीता परस्पेक्टिव द होल ऑफ इंडिया एंड मच ऑफ द वर्ल्ड इज रिस्पॉन्डिंग टू द India successful soft landing on the southern pole of the moon through Chandrayaan three mission. While Indians are understandably delighted, much of the world is also highly appreciative of the not just the technological success with India becoming the fourth country to land a mission on the moon, spacecraft on the moon, and the first to land on the south pole, but also the cost effectiveness of India's endeavors. with the budget being much lesser than many top hollywood movies so how do we see this event from the bhagavad gita's perspective i will talk from three per points pod pod if you have a space pod so like a pod so p is perspectives the bhagavad gita and the wisdom tradition associated with it is vast and we can draw different points and different perspectives from that tradition to bring it beer to bring it to beer on a current event so for example the bhagavad gita itself offers this multi perspective analysis say it says that the world is a place of distress dukhale but at the same time it also says the world manifests extraordinary beauty which is to be seen as an opulence of the divine vibhuti so misery and beauty are two distinct perspectives depending on what the concerned context is so one perspective which is often taken by those following the bhagavad gita is especially by those following the teaching of shila prabhupad may be that oh the moon is a higher planet and we can't go to the moon i have another video the link which is given below where i am analyzed variety of statement that shri prabhupad has made on this topic and prabhupad was a very sophisticated thinker and he is following the sophisticated nature of the teachings of the gita which offer multiple perspectives on the same issue so for example in one side the bhagavad gita says that a brahma bhuvana loka everything in the world is temporary and even if one goes to the heaven te tam bhuktva shine punya marth loka mishan one comes back to the earth and it's what is the point of it all is going there up and coming down but the bhagavad gita is spoken to arjuna and the same arjuna in the bhagavatam when he is remembering krishna and krishna's mercy upon him in the 15th chapter of the first canto says how his attainment of heaven his rising to heaven in the self same body and his getting the privilege of sitting on the same throne as indra mahadas nardham mahadas and the asana of the great soul ardham indra invited arjuna to sit sit on his throne next to him and he says this attainment is a mercy of krishna so from the ultimate spiritual perspective we might say that everything material is temporary but from the contextual material perspective certain attainments can be glorious even stupendous and they need to be appreciated so arjuna is taking that perspective in the bhagavatam and is appreciating it as krishna's mercy so same way uh, if we start sticking to only one perspective in looking at say the moon mission we may end up becoming literalists who completely miss the subtle and the sophisticated nature of the teachings of the broad gita tradition so for example in the broader gita tradition the earth is considered to be bhumi devi now if we say that if we go to the moon we don't see chandra dev or any of the higher heavenly attributes over there of chandra loka and we say because of that that means we didn't go to the moon then will we apply the same logic to the earth as so we travel all around the earth and we don't meet bhumi devi anywhere so does that mean that we are not on the earth or does that mean bhumi devi doesn't exist no it means something more the earth itself is a multi layer entity it has a multi layer existence and bhumi devi is a celestial goddess who while associated with the earth exists at a different level 
being a goddess, she's not perceivable to our vision. Similarly, whatever is the, are the heavenly attributes of Chandra, they are not perceivable to us. So we, we, our faith shouldn't be so insecure that every single incident we see only through one prism. Does this confirm my faith or does this challenge my faith? So if we just stick to one single perspective from scripture and try to reduce both the complexity of scripture and the complexity of the world to that one particular scripture statement, then we become like a person with a hammer who wants to reduce everything in the world down to a nail that can be smashed down. But the Gita doesn't require us to do that. So multiple perspectives are available and we can see which perspective is the most conducive for our devotional upliftment, for enhancing our remembrance of the Lord, for raising our consciousness, which is ultimately the purpose of the Bhagavad Gita. So now let's look at, so if I look from alternative perspective, so P.O., we can look at the point of opulence. The Bhagavad Gita states that everything glorious, powerful, uh, wonderful manifests an opulence of Krishna, opulence of the divine. Therein it says that Jayosmi Vavasa, Yosmi, that I am victory, I am adventure. So, so the sense of excitement and anticipation and tension that grip thousands and millions as they joined the scientists who were looking at the descent of the Chandrayaan to the moon. Now that experience of adventure and then ultimately the experience of victory, Jayosmi, the elation, the delight that comes on the successful completion of something. These are extraordinarily powerful emotions. And these emotions, these experiences, the Bhagavad Gita says, are also experiences of the divine. Jaya Asmi. She says, I am victory. I am adventure. So we humans long for such extraordinary experiences. And when we have such experiences, we can see them as pointers to the divine. In fact, if we truly have a devotional, a Krishna conscious vision, then we need to be able to see the presence of Krishna or the potential for our connection with Krishna everywhere. Not just the absence of Krishna or the challenge to our Krishna consciousness everywhere. When Hanuman saw the enormous power and even the charisma, the powerful personality of Ravan for the first time in his court, the first thought in Ravan's mind was, not that, for if Ram is God, then how can Ravan be so powerful? No, his thought was, Ravan is so powerful, if only he had been a virtuous person, he could have been such a great protector for the universe. He could have been such a great ally for the gods. He could have been such a great devotee. So, the capacity to see the positive presence of God and the positive potential for connection with God everywhere is what characterizes a divine consciousness. The Gita says in the 16th chapter that a godly consciousness is characterized by a paishunam, aversion to fault finding. Now we can see the absence of spiritual connection in everything and condemn it, or we can see the potential for spiritual connection in everything and appreciate it. This is what not just Hanuman, but even Lord Ram demonstrated when he saw Vibhishan. Most of the assistants, his commanders and generals and warriors in Ram's army saw that oh, this is coming from the Rakshasa Kula. This is coming from somebody who is rightly in the family of Ravan. He's a, his brother. How can he be up to any good? But Lord Ram saw that he has come to me. And he saw the potential within his heart for rendering valuable service. And Lord Ram accepted him. So the point I'm making is the same issue can have different perspectives and the Krishna conscious vision is where we can see the opulence of God in everything. In the Bhagavad Gita, 7th chapter, Krishna says, I am ability in human beings. 
So uh, the scientists in India have demonstrated extraordinary ability, great dedication, and they have achieved something substantial. And this is achieved after many, after long efforts. The previous Chandrayaan mission was a was a it just was a failure at the last moment. Just recently, Russia's mission failed. So, if we are going to dismiss everything as simply hoaxes, then why would somebody orchestrate a, a multi-million dollar hoax? Why not have it always a success? So, after great endeavor, when something is a success, we see that success also as not just human endeavor, but the human endeavor that is manifesting the divine opulence. And that brings us to the last point, that is P-O-D, D is direction. And whenever there is a manifestation of a human opulence, does that uh, human opulence direct us toward the divine or direct us away from the divine? Srila Prabhupada saw in technological advancement the opportunity for spiritualization. So in fact, the first book that Srila Prabhupada wrote when the space race started, that was the easy journey to other planets. And in that, he dedicated that book to the scientists of the world. And there, he took a very affirmative stance. So Prabhupada himself demonstrates this capacity to see that events in the world can sometimes be used to direct our, con direct our consciousness toward the divine. So now, with respect to the particular incident of India landing a mission on the moon, what does this imply? This implies India's rising position on the global scene. And the India of the past of Maharaj Yudhishthir was not just spiritually devoted, it was also materially prosperous. And the India of today, if we see this attainment in its broader context, India has a land which has a glorious spiritual tradition, a glorious astronomical tradition also, with scientists like with uh, researchers, observers, scientists like Arya Bhatta and Bhaskar Achari. And India has a very dynamic, living, dharmic tradition right now. India is more and more aligning itself with the, many of the dharmic values of the past. Even the scientists who did this research, before they started the Chandrayaan, they went to Tirupati Balaji and sought the blessings. So when there is so much potential for seeing a devotional connection, why should we not see that and appreciate the devotional connection? So as India rises on the global scene, the increasing self-confidence that India gets through this and the increasing appreciation, admiration that the world has for India, we can hope and facilitate and inspire that this rising self-confidence of India doesn't just stay limited to material accomplishments, but also spreads to spiritual exploration and spiritual accomplishment. India has the great wealth of spiritual wisdom in the form of Bhagavad Gita and various spiritual classics. So if the Chandrayaan and its success inspires within Indians a greater self-awareness greater awareness of our own potentials, and not just potential for material exploration and advancement, but also spiritual exploration and advancement, then that holistic all-round progress can be a true harbinger for change in the entire world, changing the world internally and externally for the better. At the end of the Bhagavad Gita, uh, it is described how Arjuna and Krishna together Yatra Yogeshwara Krishna, Yatra Partho Dhanurdhara, Yatra Shreer Vijayo Bhuti. There, there will be victory, there will be opulence, there will be greatness. So, if India today infuses itself with the spirit of Arjuna and Krishna as the spiritual essence of the holy land of India is already there, if Arjuna and Krishna can be linked together in India, harmonizing with its vital spiritual essence, then there can be an era of prosperity that can come 
not only that can come but india can lead the world towards that in the future so to summarize pod are the three points with respect to the bhagavata perspective the bhagavata tradition can offer us multiple perspectives on contemporary issues so instead of only seeing it through the one particular perspective of it challenging our faith and we need to dismiss such events we can see from an alternative perspective as the the same tradition demonstrates with respect to arjuna's rising the heaven being considered temporary but arjuna's rising to heaven being considered glorious then what alternative perspective can look at that is o oh, opulence that the adventure the victory the ability all of these can be seen as manifestations of the divine and thus our spirituality our devotion is seen not just in the disconnection of things with the divine but the potential for connection of things with the divine as was hanuman's vision of ravan and as was ram's vision of vibhishan and the last d is direction while material opulence can intoxicate us and take us away from the spiritual growth of consciousness and the divine it doesn't have to especially in the context of india rising and india not only growing materially but also becoming more confident about exploring its own spirituality and its own traditional wisdom we hope that india can become more like arjuna and align with the div divinity that is there in india that is krishna and thus india can lead the world towards an era of progress and prosperity that will be holistic both material and spiritual thank you hare krishna